We are live. We are back. Patrick is back in the house, back in Puerto Rico. It's been a while since we've been in the same place, or at least in the same place with the ability to live stream. Yeah, I'm trying to even remember the schedule that we've had. Obviously, like the beginning of the year, I was back in the States having the baby. Then I came back, and then you left for two months. And then I left for a little bit to do some family reunion type thing. And now, oh, we just had your bachelor party in Vegas. Had a bachelor, which was supposedly a super spreader event, but I don't think anyone got it. So. We had one, but we have who, some interesting stuff to talk about. And where do you want to begin? Um, why don't we go ahead and set up the next critique and kind of get the show rolling? Okay. So. I have not been involved in these for a few now. You've had like Katie and your mom and all these people. I think the next one that we're gonna do is unusual lighting. Okay. So if you've taken a photograph with natural light that's really strange looking, maybe some weird reflections, or if you've been in the studio and you've used gobos or maybe you up light and that's not really common, I don't wanna give you too many restrictions on what you can and can't do, but the idea is unusual lighting. If you wanna enter this contest, head over to fstoppers.com slash contest and you can submit up to two images. We're gonna do this next critique next week because I'm about to fly to Italy to go to a wedding for our formal, former assistant. Uh, Lauren is getting married in Italy, which is a whole other can of worms traveling overseas, but mm -hmm. maybe we'll get to that. We should do a coronavirus journal soon because a lot's kind of, we're, we're in this weird stage where I feel like, There's are, still are we over it or on. is it about to come back? Well, I don't know that I told you this, but somebody who was in my church, you know, like church youth group 20 years ago, um, she just died of COVID. Yeah. She, she, the story goes, and you know how this is, this is like hearing through two people, so okay. who knows, but the story goes is that she started feeling bad. She suspected maybe she had it, but it wasn't that big of a deal. The next day she felt super bad. So she said, fine, let's go to the hospital. And then she died a few hours later in the hospital. How old? I guess my age, like 36-ish. So I think old. she was a little younger than me. Um, it sounds suspicious, the way that story's being told. And we probably shouldn't go into it. This yeah, is not that's not what this show journal. is all about. But um, So <clears throat> unusual lighting. As normal, we are going to show the highest rated image. And then let's pick, there's 10 images. Why don't you pick a random winner for a free tutorial. Number 10. Number 10, so the first and the last image, let's just jump right into this. Maybe we'll do some story time in between. Okay. Now, what is this critique? I set this one up. This is supposed to be unique or clever, clever images. Clever images. There's nothing clever about this. So let me just go ahead and say this. Oh boy. I, I took a look at the images from this critique, and I have to say, I think this is one of the worst, not the worst images I've ever seen. But the worst application of... Yeah, like the images are just not clever. There's a few that are, and I think you put them in here, but this is literally just ice cream. What is clever about this? Um... Because there's another ice cream shot that you have in here that is clever, right? I don't know. With is socks it... or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, what, I don't. I don't. This, this is it's, just ice cream. So I had to disqualify a bunch of images for not fitting the theme, or they didn't leave any behind the scenes, you know, information on how they shot it or why they shot it or you know any of the interesting stories that we now require with this being a live show. Um, this image I couldn't really disqualify because it was the highest rated image, but maybe it should have been. Yeah, I think it, I think we have to disqualify this image. This cannot win. We cannot. We can't give people prizes when they didn't even follow the directions maybe this was clever to them maybe this isn't ice cream and this is butter or you know something weird did they write that in the thing i don't know why don't we why don't let's, we load it up and see, see what they why said. this is clever mark says made this for a portfolio builder f stopper should make a food tutorial uh we have considered that uh made with three or four different images made a big mess but i thought it was clever to have it floating with the drip hanging off the side not sure I can agree that this is a clever, at least in the way that I wanted it Fake to be clever. Fake ice cream and shot on white originally. So they changed the background and this is uh, not real ice cream, either this is some other substance or could this be like some molded ice cream that, you know, it's like the fake ice that's like just acrylic. Having any product floating is not clever. 
that is what every product is. If you go on Amazon, every item is on white. <laughs> that is what the photos are. So, well, Mark, I'm sorry. I don't hate this image, but you didn't follow directions. I can't give you the tutorial. You're going to have to uh, submit to next week's critique. You think that's fair? I don't want to be the asshole. I mean, it. I do think that's fair. Okay. This also has no comments, but this was the highest rated image. Are we able to see what the community rated this? Or should we rate this first? Uh, based on... Why isn't it showing me? That's weird. Am I logged in? I am logged in. Huh. I can't see the rating for whatever reason. Well, uh, our contest system has been glitching recently, so maybe uh, maybe that's an issue. Anyway, uh, let's rate this. Three, two, one. Three stars. What do you got? Three? Three? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and people in the comments, I see you talking about my uh, black eye here. I didn't think people would be able to see it because I can't see it. I went to dinner with you last night, and I didn't even see it. I picked you up from the airport, and you didn't see it, but I was wearing sunglasses. And I was like, what did you do to your face? Yeah. Is that like a toenail? It's like a toe straight? No, I literally got punched in my face um, by a white belt who, he was just flailing. Like, jujitsu is this weird sport where... They call it the gentle art. And as you get better and better, you can do it so smoothly and right. so gently without hurting anyone. But when you're a white belt, you're like at more the liable? Well, at the beginning, you are you just get your ass beat all the time and you feel, you feel like the people you're fighting against are invincible because we just know more. And so you think, no matter what I can do, I cannot hurt this person, so I'm just gonna go 100% mm. you know, to try to win. And that's okay at times. Like, I don't mind if you use 100% of your strength, but when you start like making crazy movements with arms and legs, that's when people get punched and kicked in the face. And like, this guy literally had a closed fist and punched me in the face. Mm -hmm. um, so if somebody wants to punch you in the face, they just need to do jujitsu with you as a white belt. Uh, yeah, they could try, but if they did it on purpose, they would be choked unconscious. So, uh, yeah, anyway. All right, so we're going to just move along. Move along. Mark, All right. you, you, you didn't win. Second image. Let's go full screen here. So this um, might also have a bit of cleverness, but I don't know if it's um, total left field. Oh, my gosh, I've never thought of this concept before. But Let's see. You made this image. Wait, this is the same guy. Mark, oh my gosh, he has... Made this image as a portfolio builder, kind of cliche with the flame and the tequila shot. Can you light all tequila on fire? Is that a thing? Or is this just, is this fake? I don't know. I thought you could only light alcohol that was over a certain proof, and I didn't think most alcohol was above that proof. Like Everclear or something, you know, it's like 180 proof, which means it's like 90% alcohol, I believe is the math there. You can light that. Like when you go to the hibachi grills, you know, they always light the little volcano. I don't think they're just using any alcohol. I thought it had to be over a certain uh, proof level, but um, I, I don't know. Maybe somebody out there knows the answer to that. I've never tried to light my alcohol. Is this more or less clever than a floating ice cream This cone? is more clever. I agree. Um, if this was the highest rated image, I think I would give it... Um it's still not exactly what I had hoped for. Like the, the image that it's I It's almost used, like quirky, like clever. A uh, concept. Yeah, it's like we're going to do something that might need a little explaining. The creative director is going to be like, wait, what are we going to do? Oh, well, okay, I, that's kind of cool. I like to think it would, you know, you're looking through pictures and you're like, ooh, I want to look at that one again. Like that's, that's interesting what Makes they got going on there. And yeah, and this one they got the flame, but like I don't even know if this is what I had in mind. But it's uh, well done. I feel like this is a better image than the previous one. Yeah. Let's go ahead and rate this. All right. Three, two, one. I'm between a three and a four. I'm going three. I, I, I also am in between those two. I think my biggest problem with this is that blue background makes it feel cheap to me. Really? Yes. I it, don't mind the blue background. I think if that background, if, if you want to keep it that blue color to kind of match the label, I love that. But I think if there was something else going on in the background, like it was a out of focus bar or something that had that blue tone, I think that would look so awesome. But because it's that paper with the gradient on it, it just feels cheaper to me. But when I look at the lighting on the bottle and the flame and everything, everything looks so good to me. 
but the cheapest part is that blue. Well, in the way this background is, it would be very easy to cut in some kind of blurry background and just put it in there. Be Absolutely. To see that, like with a comp. Maybe you'd have to play around with the reflection in the bottle so it kind of looks like more realistic. The problem I have with this image, and it's not really a problem, I just think it could be a little stronger, is I feel like the top part of the bottle needs a backlight or needs a fill light or the cork in the or the top, whatever it's made out of, and the label on the top feels like it's a little dark to me. It, um, that is true. It, just a little bit more. I feel like the bottom three quarters of the bottle is perfect. And maybe there'd be a way to even paint in some warmth selectively on the label near the flame. So, it kind of, I mean, he kind of has that. There's like a mm -hmm. highlight. See this little highlight right here that's going down the side? Mm -hmm. But right on the side of the product, if you could maybe do some frequency separation, keep the detail there and just brush in a little bit of color just to make it a little more cohesive, I think that would be cool. I still don't know that this is like super clever, but um, I like the image. I think it's a pretty good bottle shot. Next up. More bottles. Is this one more clever? Is it more clever or cleverer? Aren't there some that you can do both? Are there? I think you can say more fat or fatter. Really? I like more clever. That sounds... Cleverer, girl. What's the one unique? You can't say more unique because the definition of unique is... Is it in itself more? Um, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So I don't know. Um, but do you like Frank's hot, uh, red hot sauce? I do. I am a hot sauce connoisseur. And I love so many different hot sauces. I like some of the fancy stuff, but Frank's is one of my favorite um, cheap hot sauces. You come any further along? Um... Man, so my hot sauce, I, I got this glass blower in um, like Savannah who made me some prototype bottles that I thought like, okay, I think we could work with this. And I gave him 500 bucks and this I said- This is recently or uh, last few months? Maybe or? like three months ago. Okay. And so I gave him 500 bucks and I was like, let's make another prototype, but like this, but better. And he's like, cool. And then nothing. And so every time I talk to him, he's like, oh, sorry. I'm... You've paid him already? Yeah, I gave him 500 cash. Like I went to okay. his glass blowing studio. And is there a problem with uh, making a custom blown piece of, you know, container glassware versus like it being mass produced or can they take that and say we can now no no i want I, I my thought was with my with this brand is at the beginning i was just going to go full handmade um oh, very gonna, expensive yeah, it's gonna be really expensive right? yeah but very small batch you know like one of a kind each one going out personally you know mailed out by me and then if i get a little momentum maybe going mass produce bottles, but I thought maybe what could make my hot sauce stand out is that it would come in these handcrafted bottles that you want the bottle even more than the sauce. It's like a piece of artwork. That was the thought. Okay. But anyway, um, to answer your question, no, it's a disaster and it's not working out. Let's rate this. <laughs> Three, two, one. I don't know what this is. Yeah, I don't really either. This is an image, though, one, I think is more clever than the previous images. There's actually some thought process. Like, there's a theme here. The theme is, let's go with time. Let's do something with a clock, and how can we brainstorm the clock and fit in the bottles, or we're going to use the peppers and maybe some different ingredients to represent, you know, every three hours. Um, this I could see being used in, like, a stop-motion ad or something on Instagram. I think a lot yes. of ad agencies, and I can see the brand Frank's being like, oh, this is worth investing in, and it's like going to click around, and the bottles are going to move. Like, And so in your portfolio, maybe this just represents a still frame from this stop motion thing that you made. It's one of those that it's not, I don't know that this is strong enough to be in your portfolio where you're going to get a ton of work from this, but it's kind of like, you know, you know when you shoot for a big brand or you've had a, a decent commercial job, and then you're like, I'm never really going to put this in my portfolio because maybe it made me a good bit of money. Maybe I made five grand. I don't know that, you know, 10 grand or something and it's been used, but you're like, it's commercial work that's not good enough to be in my portfolio. Sure. It, well, you know, all the, this is all the time you get hired to do something very specifically that you think is kind of a bad subject right, matter. Right. You, you get hired to take a photo of an ugly hotel. 
well, that's what the hotel looks like. You got to do it, but yeah. you can't put that on your website. Yeah. This this kind of feels like that, where this is an image that's it's like, oh, I shot for Franks, and I don't know if this is spec work or this is like a concept or this was actually done for Franks. It but just, even if it was, it's like, okay, cool, you did this, but I don't know. I think if, if you came up with this concept, I like the concept. I think this is a really good execution of, pull it up. I think it had something to do with like, any time is good for Frank's hot sauce. If that's the, the, the tagline that the creative director throws you, yeah. and they haven't completely fleshed out the idea, I think this is a pretty good representation of that idea. Yeah, so... Okay, they gave one sentence. Again, guys, give us a little bit more behind the scenes. In the description, when you submit images, write a little bit more. Um, there's a, a couple of things about this that just kind of make it feel cheap. And I think the main one is all of the weird specular highlights in the bottles, right? Yep. Like the bottles are the most important part. This is the brand. This is who you're shooting for. And then there's just these cheesy... Like, maybe you can even see the photo. Maybe that's the photographer's head right there. Or it's like the camera on a tripod. I, I don't know. You know, I look at this, and I'm like... Clean that up or light it in a different way? Well, I keep going back and forth between hating this lighting, like this super flat, harsh lighting. And then, I'm, and then I think, like, no, actually, I think I like the lighting. Like, on the left side of the Frank's Hot Bottle, it's just the faintest shadow. Yeah. I don't know how this was lit, but it seems like it was lit with a big light source somehow. I don't. And you see down here, it's like it's lit from the left down. So yeah, below. so I'm so confused. It's like on the bottom left, the shadows are going up, but then the bottles themselves seem to be casting light down and to the left. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. They just have like lights all over the place, but it's flattened out the image for the most part, which I think is okay but it just makes the product itself look super cheap. It's, it's almost like a ring light, but it doesn't have that distinct halo around every yeah, object. Yeah, it's yeah. like off center just enough, but like you said, how can you have the shadow going here towards the center, but then also have it going, to, and then it's harder. It is weird lighting. I, I don't know that I can figure it out either. I like the flatness of this. I think this makes it pop. It gives a ton of contrast. It makes it jump off the page. This isn't the type of lighting that you would use maybe with like a face, typically, in a person. Yeah. But this is an important lighting style that I think photographers need to know how to execute, even though we're having a hard time figuring out exactly how they did it. But I do not like the specular highlights on the bottle. I think you could refine that if this was composited, use a better lighting uh, example for the, the hot sauce or clean the highlights up to make them look a little more smooth. Yeah. But I see you want the highlight in the middle of all those peppers on the top and that's why they did it. Um, yeah, I have no problem with the, uh, the flatness of the light. I, again, I just think it's like, all right, maybe if you had a portfolio and your website was a bunch of thumbnails, kind of like Instagram, and you just throw that in there and somebody says, oh, Frank's, like they've shot for them, okay. It kind of solidifies that you've worked with a big brand if you've actually worked with them. If you haven't, it's like kind of cheating. It's like the fake it till you make it. You put a bunch of brands in your portfolio you've never shot for. Yeah. I don't think that that's like kosher and I don't think you should do that, but. Um, really? What, put a bunch of brands in that you haven't shot for? It's a little strange. Like we I mean, know, we know a couple product photographers and they're always really picky about that. They're like, I did this work as a concept. Well, they, they just say that. They just, they make that known, but they share those images of famous bottles and stuff, yeah. you know, but they'll say it was spec work or whatever. All right, next up. Did we rate this? We did. We gave this a three, three right? We can't see what the community I said. I think. All right. All right. Can... Next image. So this was an image that I thought was very strange. Obviously, these girls are... Okay, Patrick, this is the type of clever image that I was talking they are, about. They are naked, this and I can't figure exactly out what's going on. exactly what I had in mind. I asked Kristen, what do you think of this image? And she's like, why do they have to be naked? And are they, is this representing them pleasuring each other? And I was like, I think it is. Like, well, did I just, is this the same girl? Kind of looks like the same girl. When I saw this, I thought it was two girls, but now I'm like, oh, is it just the same girl somehow duplicated? Seems kind of kind of like tricky Photoshop work to do that. Yeah, I don't know. I I struggle with. 
And is your censoring acceptable for YouTube? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what's acceptable. We, we live in this weird paradigm where I can show my nipple. You remember the free the nipple yeah, campaigns like eight years ago? Yeah. It is weird that in certain societies you can show a nipple of one sex but not the other. Um, I'm all for the liberation of, you know, sexual beings and women. Oh, I bet you are. Well, I'm on uh, F-stoppers right now where I can see this uncensored. Oh, wow. And he says it is the same person. Okay. But duplicated. Now... Why is she spraying herself with a bottle? I think it's an innuendo, right? Like it's supposed to be getting off and like pleasuring and, you know, sp spray spraying. I just don't know what kind of job you're going to get with this. Maybe there's some markets in Europe where nudity isn't quite as taboo as it is here in America. You've always seen those like commercials that are banned in America and they play on the sexuality theme really heavily. Maybe it kind of makes sense in that context, but I just think if you put an image like this on your portfolio, I think you're going to turn away more clients than you're going to impress and gain them. Absolutely. I think this starts to come across as the typical cliche photographer who just likes to shoot girls naked, right? And if you shoot for Playboy or something, there's definitely a place for that. But when you have images like this in your portfolio, I don't know. This just seems strange to me. And it's not because I have a problem with nudity or I don't think it's kind of clever. It's just who, who's looking at this and saying, man, I want to hire you to do that. Whereas the Frank's bottle, I could make the complete opposite argument. Oh, it's kind of a clever idea and it fits our brand and it's, it's a desirable style where this just seems like this is deviant art, model mayhem, F-stoppers community. Type of what the hell does that mean? Type of photography. Um, yeah, I got you. Um, I mean, she is hot, so it's got that going for it. Mojo Rogue gave us a super chat and says, when will the future journal of current events be? I assume he means the... The Rona? The Rona journals. Uh I don't know if you feel like doing one tonight. Like, maybe we need more time to prepare. I do want to get some clips because I feel like I've watched a few videos, like, in the last two days of, like, Fauci testifying. Yeah, I saw, and, was it Rand Paul going after him yeah, again? Yeah, and, and it's like, L.A. is starting to lock down. Masks are starting to come back. But they're, all the titles on CNN are like, this variant is going to destroy everyone that's unvaccinated. And you're like, I don't know if it's going to kill everyone that's unvaccinated, but... There's so much to talk about that I think we should do it right, and maybe we go live tomorrow. Maybe and that gives us some time, some time to get some clips so that we actually can talk about something. Okay. Um, do you want to rate this image? I mean, six stars, of course. Three, two, one. Going three again. Yeah, I don't think, photographically, I don't think it's like, I think it's probably pretty decent. It's like a clever idea with the Photoshop and the execution. <laughs> I just think... I don't know. This girl right here actually reminds me. I took a pic. One of the girls I shot for my stun gun photo shoot mm -hmm. kind of looked like this girl. Yeah. And she did an expression like this naturally. Yes, I remember. And that image got picked up by a big car company. That's and right. they licensed it for thousands of dollars for an internal publication. And it, <sighs> she kind of had this look of, you know, ecstasy. For yeah. 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 So, but this goes over the top. You have two girls clearly pleasuring themselves actually naked. I don't know that that company would find the same value in this, but. All right, next up. More ice cream. Uh, this one is clever. I've never seen uh, ice cream cone full of socks before. What is that thing on the right? Yeah, what is that? Is that a... Is that like a piece of wood eaten by termites? Is it a... That doesn't Dog seem bone? as clever. Is it a dried up churro? Let's see. Will Fay took this. He says, shot for the cover of a sock catalog envelope, which was mailed to customers across the UK and US during the early part of strings from this year. Cleverly styled by a colleague of mine. But what is the thing on the right that doesn't look like a sock? Or is that pantyhose? No, dude. Pantyhose. Doesn't pantyhose sometimes come like all 
I thought tightened up like that. I thought Penny was supposed to make things look smooth, not <laughs> like an old rotted stick. <laughs> I don't know. That's the, that's what's so clever about this image is like we what keep is it? yeah we're like what is what that is turd it? that's in the image you know we gotta figure the it turd. out. Um, are you ready to rate this? Yes. Three, two, one. Two. This two. is your least favorite image so far. I don't like this image. I think it is clever, and I think that's its strong suit. I don't love the lighting and the post-production. It feels flat and cheap and less polished than it should be. I don't mind the background. I'll get mm-hmm. everything out, and then you... I don't love the back. I don't mind the background. The background looks kind of interesting. What is that background? That's it almost, weird. It almost looks like those little pendant flags. Yes. What is that? I don't know. It's kind of got like Strange. an ice cream motif or something. Maybe you should have the. Does act- it? Maybe you should have the actual, not the shadow of it, but the actual pendants with some light and color. I just think if this was lit better, and then get rid of that weird stick, we get the idea that it's ice cream. Maybe it would be better. Maybe. Maybe that's an important Does piece. this make you want to buy socks, though? Like, the, I go back to the Frank's ad, and you're like, oh, I always love hot sauce. Every time is a perfect time it for It makes hot sauce. me feel like, you know, when I see socks like this, they're dirty, and they're wadded up on my floor, and I'm like, ooh, I don't want to touch that. They probably are dirty. Yeah. Um, so... For that reason, you know, I'm not like super appetized by these this ice cream or these socks, but I think my potentially biggest critique is I don't like the position of the hand. Like that feels super uncomfortable. Nobody would eat ice cream like that. If anything, you would you would hold it between your fingers and you'd use your thumb in there, but to hold it you can't see my hand, but to hold it like that. That, it just doesn't feel comfortable. Um, the hard lighting that they have on it kind of works. It's almost like I we saw an image where somebody said they were inspired by your pedal board photo shoot, where you did like the hard light on the flat color, yeah. and you, you played with the shadows from that hard light. I almost would like to see that. Instead of the strange pendants in the back, play with the shadow of the hand and the ice cream hitting an interesting colored back wall or something. Maybe. I'm just throwing ideas out there. But I just don't I don't like the hand position and then I don't understand the pendants in the back. Yeah. I'm almost wondering if you could somehow shoot this on a seamless and this is a lot of composite work, but you'd have cones that are standing on the tip and each cone has its own sock I don't know if that's ruining the idea, but I'm trying to play on the ice cream thing. I just feel like two of the socks are just kind of boring colors, and the others have some design to them, but I just don't know if this is punchy enough to where when you're scrolling through Facebook or Instagram and you see this image, you say, wow, I know that brand, and I know those socks, and it reminds me to, to go out and buy these socks at TJ Maxx or whatever. I I don't know. I don't. I think it's cl- it's close. It's got that idea there, but and it's certainly clever. Potentially the most clever. Yeah. Of the of the whole critique, so we got to give them some extra points for that. Okay. Come on, Patrick, get your shit together. Why is it not? Come on, learn technology. To use the iPad. Come on, here you move it. I'm gonna do it on the first try. Are you? Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> do I have the old lady fingers? What's yeah. going on? So, if I remember correctly, I think I saw this one on the critique. Um, this is like a, an engagement photos. Okay. Save the date photo for a f- freshly engaged couple. Um, I'll zoom in so you guys can see. Basically, he showed kind of their lives independently, their interests. So, she's into wakeboarding and ukuleleing, and he's into, I guess, also wakeboarding and then biking. Um, so, interesting. Uh, I, you know, we used to be wedding photographers for a long time. We would do engagement shoots. I don't think we ever fell into the themed wedding shoots. But the themes that you would see would be replicated again and again. Everybody's like copying everybody. and playing guitar. And, and, and balloons and stuff. Like, yeah. you know, weird stuff. I have not seen anything like this. Right. Maybe it's a little bit cheesy, but at least from my opinion, 
being being out of the wedding industry for a while now, this is unique. It's kind of refreshing. It's clever. Yeah. And here's the thing. If you start doing the cliche shoots like everyone else does, it looks like you're trying... Like, you're going to first get clients wanting you to do that all the time, which would drive me crazy. But then you're also copying the common themes that are out there all the time. If this is in your portfolio and you do a couple variations of this, you could become the person who's known for this, and you probably want to supplement it with other styles so that you're not just pigeonholed into doing this. But I think that's kind of cool. If I could say, hey, I'm known for this type of shot, and we're going to do this with every client if they want, Yep. that would be refreshing and new, you know? Yeah. And then other people might start copying you and doing this, and then that kind of makes you like the originator. And yeah. It gives you value and um, some artistic merit. So I, I like that. Um, do you want to rate this or continue to talk about it? Let's rate it. All right. Three, two, one. Um, three is what I meant to throw. I... Okay. I'm in between a three and a four just because of what it is. I mean, I've always said I rate images of real people a little bit more leniently than professional commercial images where you can hire perfect models and right. have all day to get the light this perfect. This is a good-looking couple. Like, Yeah, they are, but, you know, it's like... You also like to hold restraint when it's real people? Is there something you don't want to let out? No... I'm just I'm just trying to think of what I don't to love say. her hand position. I want to see <laughs> the it's thumb. It's a little broken, yeah. I want to see the thumb and the pinky is kind of like when people hold the champagne bottles with the <laughs> pinky up, you know. It's not the champagne; it's the tea. The tea? Yeah. There's the high tea. There's a lot of stuff. No? If you're a frou frou. Um, what I do like about this is the depth of field looks consistent. I like that the ones, everyone, as they go further back, they're kind of more blurry. And if you're going to go with the shallow depth of field, like it'd be very easy to ruin this image by having the shallow depth of field, but then compositing in a perfectly sharp or, person or a fake. Yeah, or just having everything kind of be in focus. I, I really think it's better. I think they've chosen a correct depth of field. You can still tell who the people are back there, but your eye is still focused on them in the front. So I think that's good. Anything Next else? No, Is there anything so. to talk about with kind of explained it all? Yeah. All right. Next image. What a clever idea. A floating product. But it's over a blue block. Oh, okay. I tried to find, you said to bring back your Bose headphones, your glass sunglasses. Find them. I didn't see those. I don't know what I did with them. They broke. But I, I How bought many pairs have you bought? Have I've, you bought? Like, I've had like four pairs now. Yeah really bad when you need to listen to as many podcasts <laughs> as lee morris you yeah. got to get the the bose headphones with the this is the same them. guy this is mark oh boy how many pe how many images did you let people submit three he got all three he, in that's how bad the submissions were for this critique <laughs> is like these photos are good mark i'm not hating on your photography it's just they're not clever no images but good lord if mark didn't submit this critique would have been horrific um, are you ready to rate this? Yeah. Three, two, one. I think this, I think okay. I, like, I like this image. This I want to give this four, two. But I do not like that cube on the bottom, man. That looks so fake to me. I feel like if you zoom past that cube and just like zoom into that and just make it the glasses... Can you go further? Is that it? You want nothing. Yeah, I just that. want that. Yeah. I feel like that is perfect. That's a simple four-star image. But zoom in now to the uh, to that weird thing on the bottom. Like, what is that? It that looks, doesn't look real. It looks like you took a... It's like you took a clip art from Google... Like a brushed, from, from, brushed metal, and then you've blurred it in one direction, yes. and then you've you've comped it in with you know a layer yes. mask. That's oddly specific. It Maybe feels I've done that like myself. some sort of uh, 3D computer art from 1992, or it's like a, a 3D printed where everything's got like a very strong line because it's been built up layer by layer by layer. When I look at this, I almost see like a face. I see like the shadows, a smile or something. 
it's like a Pac-Man or you see the, the I do yeah the, which was the shadow down there yeah I feel like that shadow might be a little hard he says everything in this photo was made in Photoshop except for the frames and the shadow oh that's interesting so he did light the glasses with a really hard light from above that cast that hard shadow down there did not intend to do that but oh well made for a portfolio builder uh, the he wanted to make the base look like a piece of wood he guesses uh, I, he thought it was clever to add a bunch of noise and blur, blur it for the sides, and just noise on the top. Oh, I see what he did. So he added noise on the flat layer and blurred it. Uh, what's it called? Gaussian blur, like a, no, direct, a motion directional blur, motion yeah, blur, motion blur, and blurred it down to make the sides, and then he just made noise for the top. I of think the box. it would be stronger if you had to fake this just to make it different shades of blue with gradients and make it to where it just goes from a highlight to a shadow and then maybe a variation of that on the other side so that it doesn't really call attention to itself. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's the most eye catching part of this image aside from the glasses. As soon as you see the glasses, you go down to the pedestal and say like, what is that? Yeah. I don't know that you should necessarily, your mind shouldn't necessarily go there. Did we rate this? Uh, we did. I gave it a four, and you gave it a three. Okay. And do you still give it a four after knowing how bad the bottom is? I don't know. I mean, clever? I think, again, this is, like, disqualified. <laughs> like, is this clever? I don't no, know. this is not clever. Maybe you think it's clever in the way that you, like, accomplished it in Photoshop, but if you step out and say, is the concept in the no. theme clever, uh, you know, I don't know that this is clever, but... Is this the final image? Are we going to give away no tutorial? No, oh, we got more. I okay. think we got more. Now this is clever. This is interesting. Um, this was taken by Robin Edwards. I think we have one more. So if there was ever a time to share a story before we wrap this thing up. Well, what stories do you want to tell, Patrick? Um... I don't know. We went to Vegas. Yep. I got a dog that's sleeping over here. Something happened in your life? Anything crazy besides getting kicked or punched in the face? No, nothing. We're getting kicked out of this house. Yeah. This house is like very close to being sold. Yeah, we might be moving out of Puerto Rico. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. The real estate's just gone crazy down here. And maybe you could say it's uh, karma. For not like I purchasing gonna, I a house. I was going to say that. I was going to say it's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like maybe the current price of houses is just the new price and maybe it's going to go up even more. And so maybe we should just buy for the inflated prices now. But because we've been here for years and we've seen the prices of homes and we've seen that none of the houses were selling until just a few months ago, we're stubborn and we're like, I'm not paying 50%, 80% more for a house that's been sitting on the market for three years? It's like people that kind of want to get into Bitcoin, and they're like, I remember when Bitcoin was five grand. I'm not buying it for 20 grand or yeah. 30 grand. Yeah. But maybe 30 grand is the new bottom, and yeah. that's just what it costs now. And and if it goes up indefinitely, you'd be foolish. Not, I mean, you've had this issue with the stock market. Yeah. You keep waiting to get in on the crash, and you never do. Yeah. But I don't know. When homes are in all-time highs and interest rates are at all-time lows, it sure feels like a bubble. But yeah, I don't really know. I don't either. So yeah, we might be kicked out of the house, and then we have we're to definitely say, getting kicked out of the house. Yeah, and then it's like, well, do we want to buy properties of our own? We're obviously probably not going to live together anymore just because we have babies and dogs, and our lives are going. You know, we're adults. We don't need to be right. Living and we're not going to find anymore. another home like this that's got everything in it. No, not for this price. But so I don't know what the studio and the living situation would be like here. I don't know if I'm going to continue to rent or buy or be in a condo. A lot of questions there. But um, we did just wrap up the studio in Charleston. For the last year, I've been renovating the entire old studio that was a very, it was such a strange space that we never really wanted to show it on video. And it, when we did, it was behind the scenes with the Lila Cardi and it wasn't great, you know? Yeah. Now it is spectacular. Like the studio looks so awesome. I'm kind of excited to get back there and buy the furniture and get the live sets and the seamless paper and all the shooting areas done. So when we go back to Charleston, we will be able to do more live streaming instead of just being non-productive because there's nothing to do back there. 
Um, so I am excited about that element. Yeah. You haven't seen the, the finished product, but you were there for a lot of the renovation. Don't you remember when you told me that you thought it would be completed before? By March. We, no. It was like February, March was the time frame. I thought you said you thought it would be completed before we even moved into your house. You, I thought at one time you said before, the baby. at the end of 2020, you were like, I think it'll be done before you even get to the house. Maybe. And they had hardly begun. They always told me it was going to be three months to do, but then all of the uh, uh, the people for the city, the uh, permitters and all that, they yeah. all quit or were fired because of the pandemic. And then they had like one guy doing five jobs because it's just weird market right now with coronavirus. It took two and a half months to get stuff signed off for. Some so that pushed thing. it forward. And then the price of lumber is outrageous. Yeah. And so uh, just everything was slower than it needed to be, but it's done. Keys have been handed over to me. It's like our space now. So like, that's pretty exciting. Um, so I don't know, like I have no intention. I don't know when I'll be back in Charleston. The next time I go back to the States is for our wedding. I can probably do, try to do a honeymoon maybe if, there, if it works out. And then uh, maybe the holidays, but if we got to move out of here, I kind of want to do the holidays in this house. Yeah. But then, you know, if we're kicked out around January 1st, Maybe Christmas, I got to be here to unpack and sell or store everything that we have in here. I don't know. It's just going to be a hectic November, December. Uh, Andy asks, why are we renovating the studio in Charleston if we're staying in Puerto Rico? I think we have one employee in the States, and it's just easier to get things done in the States. So if we, you know, like if a photographer wanted to fly to Charleston to film something in that yeah. studio... I think the idea would be to have as many operations as going as possible. Have something happening in Puerto Rico, also have our employee in the States doing something, yeah. and we're just more productive. And then also, right now, anytime we went back to Charleston, it's like we have a laptop in a bedroom, and we don't want to do any work when we're there. It kind of feels like vacation, and as you see, we had very few critique the communities the last few months because we didn't work when we were in Charleston. So having an operational studio, you know, we can just do so much more. And the other reason for me personally, it was part of my house yeah. that if I ever sold the house, I have this weird, strange building in the back. Now yeah. it's a beautiful building that is probably double the value of my home. Yeah. And so I feel like the perfect time to do that was when I was not living in it and the pandemic was happening. Yeah. So I think all those reasons, it, it made a lot of sense. But now we got to figure out like, what does a studio space look like here? Because if we mm -hmm. rent smaller homes, it may be like a backdrop in a little bedroom yep. and we each have that and yep. we don't have this space where we can you know do full body shoots if we want it or you know, there's just a lot more we can do here we have a room with this live set so um we'll see it's gonna be a crazy next few months for show let's rate this image all right three two one four three i don't know I'm gonna go four, I guess, maybe. I really like the thoughtfulness, and I think this is clever. It's like a hat rack with it being a human, but they're in the shade and it's kind of cool. I don't know that this is the type of image that's gonna stop me in my tracks, and I don't know if I can give it a four, definitely not a five star. But if you have, again, I always go back to like series. If you had a series of 10 of these with different hats and different models, yeah. and it was an idea that you came up with and executed, I think brands and creative directors and people that might hire you to be a photographer on their set would say, that's pretty clever. That's really cool. I haven't seen that done before. And because of that, I think it's, uh, it's, it's kind of worth more than a three, but on its own, it photographically looks like a solid, just a solid image. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I really love the concept, but is something weird about her posture? It's like the image isn't straight. She's leaning back in this weird way. Like, Do you think the shoulder in, by her chin is her back shoulder or her front shoulder? Is she like turned like this or is oh it Oh my like, gosh, it's flipping back and forth in my vision now. I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's her back shoulder and her forward shoulder is tilted down and it's giving this weird illusion of her being. I mean, she's definitely leaning back or the camera's tilted weird. I don't know. I, I I really would like to see this as a series. I'd like, and maybe I'd like the background to be a little bit more interesting. But uh, is there a little more strange coloring up here on the hat. 
Oh, I do see it's that. It's kind of weird to even begin to point that out, but like yeah. if this was a product shot for the hats, those are the little things that you have to make sure are yeah. more solid. Shooting silhouettes are difficult. I had this concept for the well-rounded photographer featured image where it was a silhouette like this, and every time I, I got an image from stock or I tried to shoot something on my own, it just looked so cheesy. It's like the features of the face have to be so good and interesting. Otherwise, it looks like this cheap uh, illustration or something. It mm. doesn't look like photography. And when I look at this, I see elements of that problem that I had. But do you think they lit this all in one? Or it's like they've just burned in the person to make it even darker, but the light was kind of spilling over the subject. You see what I'm saying? Robin says, no Photoshop was involved in the image except for creating contrast and the gradient and the backdrop, hmm. um, which I don't quite understand. I mean, just looking at the way this was lit, to me, it seems like a lot of Photoshop would have to be done to get the person that black and the hat that white. Because it, it appears that that light is very close to that hat. Like, the light source is here. That's what it feels like to me. But, um, I don't know. It's cool. I don't really like her posture. And then I want, I want a little bit more interesting background. But is this the last shot? There's one more. With a landscape. Now... Have we seen this image before? Or... Uh, I don't know. Man, I played this video game. I know nobody cares, but I think about it all the time. It's called Ghost of Tsushima. And I played it when I had my baby. Uh, David's PlayStation is in the house. And I enjoy video games, but in my older age, I hate almost every video game. They're way too complicated. I just can't get into them, whatever. This game was so freaking satisfying. I just loved it. I couldn't wait to play and it every day. is it old day. because the PlayStation's old? Or uh, do they make new no, games? No, I, for... I think it came out like a year or two ago. I think it's relatively new. But um, anybody who's looking for a fun game to play, Ghost of Tsushima takes place uh, somewhere around Japan or something, and this reminds me of that. I don't play video games at all. I was really into them in high school, and then when college came, I dropped that altogether. When they come up with a new game and you have older platforms, mm -hmm. do they make a simpler version of the game for those other platforms? Yeah. Or are those platforms dead? Like, a no. what are they at? PlayStation 4 or 5? The 5 just came out. Yeah. Is a PlayStation 3, like, done? Because with the Nintendo, it was. Yeah. Like, they wouldn't make uh, uh, Mario 64 for, like, a different, uh, like, a lower version. So, what they've been doing recently, not for all games, but for many games, um, and Xbox is really doing this. They will release the game and it'll work for multiple systems, but it's like the graphics will be turned down for the older ones or the cheaper systems okay. or whatever. But it's the it's one game. It's kind of like on a PC. You know how you can have a really shitty PC yeah. and you can play the game but you just lower the graphics? They're kind of starting to do that now. It's basically like... That's kind of cool, though. Yeah. Like, I guess the idea, though, is it may prevent you from feeling like you need to upgrade. If you have the PlayStation 4 and the graphics, it's capable of doing so many frame rates and octagons or however they do yeah, it. Yeah, but... You may say, I don't really need the 5. That's true, but I've heard that they are actually losing money on all of their consoles. They make 100% mm -hmm. of their profit from the game sales. So, by that logic, they need to sell as many games as possible... They don't need to sell as many consoles as possible. So, who knows? So, is there a level or something in the game that reminds you? It's of just this the scene? whole game looks like this, and uh, it makes me like this. Now, is this clever? I mean, I can kind of see clever. I mean, you know, long exposure, getting the movement of the fish. That's kind of clever-ish, maybe. It's like barely there to win the tutorial. Oh, yeah, this is image number 10. Yeah, this so. is the final shot. So is this the only winning image? Uh, I don't even know that I want to give this one. Oh, gosh, you can't do that. All right, people, fine. Jose, you, People Luis, are going to say F-Stoppers doesn't hold up their deal. Hey, you, are, you guys aren't holding up your end of the deal. But maybe it's your fault, and you shouldn't have even allowed these images into the critique. 
if you think that's true, guys, go to the full post that's and true. look at the images. There weren't <laughs> that many images that were clever, and if there were some that were clever, the execution was so bad. I know, and I'm like, the images I were so bad. Can't this put this up in front of. <laughs> the audience and then try to like well, so it. i would actually be interested in hearing guys if you're on youtube right now let us know in the comments on the live chat what is your opinion of us showing bad images so in the past we used to get david to choose all the images for the critiques yeah and he he would choose like 50 percent horrific images yeah and the problem with really bad images is in many cases there's almost nothing you can say to critique them it's like you know, if, if I picked up a violin right now and tried to play music and it, like, how would you critique that? You'd be like, that's horrible. You need to take lessons and you got, you're at Everything that. about what you just did is horrible. Yeah. But where do you even begin to critique it? So recently we've been choosing the best, the best images. images. Yeah. And then that allows us to get really excited about something somebody yeah. did or to say, hey, like, here's something to consider or think about. Yeah. Um, and for you guys to also be able to do the same thing. But do you guys like it when we show really horrible images? I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. But Rockflop um, says, the voting system seems flawed. There were better images. There were either better images, but they didn't give any description. So that disqualifies you. There was two images I can remember being like, this is, there was one of like a dog being lifted by balloons. And I was like, this could be kind of cool. And the guy wrote nothing. So I'm like, you didn't make the critique. Mm. So I feel like there are better images, but they didn't write anything. The banana one up there, the fifth most popular image, also, they didn't write anything. And so I'm like, mm. I don't really know what to, to do with this. You know, it had a lot of comments. One comment says, brilliant and so well executed, but we don't know anything about the image. So I think. What makes the Critique the Community Live that we've been doing for the last year since the pandemic so interesting is it's so much easier now to read the comments and to learn what their perspective was and how they executed it. Before, when it's pre-recorded, we just like were handed the images and we can't like look them up and this kind of gives a more interactive feel. So that's why we're asking people to... This one's really clever, but I can't click on that one. Naked we'll Girl in a Bed? Band, yeah, it's very clever though. Yeah, I like There's okay, the dog this one. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, I like this one. But he didn't write anything, so you didn't allow... Yeah, I love this shot. This yeah. is super cool. Yeah. Look at that dog's face. <laughs> we get this dog up. Gibson! He is sleeping. He's Gibson, out. come here, dog. Come on, you gotta make your TV appearance. You want this? You want this? Come on, boy. Let's see, are there This any? dog's smart oh. enough to where I can't do the fake eat and give it to him. Dude, look he, at this clever image he right knows here. Nothing. That's super clever. <laughs> I saw that one too. And I was like, that's um, <laughs> interesting. What? Like, what is this? Like, could you imagine if the US Open used that image? <laughs> no, not really. Now this one, I'm surprised you didn't put this one in there. I almost did the Freddy Krueger, you know, head. But he left no no comment. If he had said, like, my thought process behind this image was <laughs> to use the egg shape of Lee's head and to mix it in with eggs, maybe it would have worked, but... Gosh, these are some bad submissions. All well, right. Well, the next one is unusual lighting. So hopefully... Um, there's going to be some cool images there. And now that everyone knows that you and I are back, maybe, maybe that's what it was missing. They knew your mom or Katie was going to critique them. And Let's they read some of these comments about whether people want the good or the bad images. No, don't show the bad images. I'm okay with it. Do whatever, guys. Agree with the mix, but avoid ones, I'd say. I, that, I try, I, yeah, I try that. Somebody says, throw in one or two bad images, not censored, be careful. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I thought floating things weren't clever. Yeah, floating things aren't clever, but a dog being carried up by a balloon, that's different than cutting a dog out and just posting it on a flat background. I like mix in a few of Patrick's Instagram. I assume they mean my official Instagram that's just pictures of crap around the world because maybe we could critique garbage, trash. Uh, I don't know. All right. Well, uh, guys, thanks for watching. 
Uh, once again, head over to fstoppers.com slash contests if you would like to be a part of the next critique. We're looking for interesting lighting. Make sure that when you submit your images, one, they have interesting lighting, but two, you write in the description. How you achieved the like, lighting yeah, or something or like, about it. Something about the image so we can talk about it on the air or else Patrick's not showing it in the critique. You're not getting in. Um, and then Maybe stay tomorrow night. tuned. Coronavirus journal. Maybe the final coronavirus journal. Probably not. No. This but <laughs> maybe it'll be tomorrow. And uh, yeah. We got ivermectin just in case. Yes, we do. All right, let's get the hell out of here. See you guys. Oh, but do I press that one? <laughs>